Well, I had three people in my family. My uncle was in the Navy from when he was 15 years old, and he was there, and uh, actually, he was on the, uh, an aircraft carrier at the time. I had an aunt that was in Hawaii, and she was in the waves, and I had an uncle over in Germany who was in the Navy. So I decided, hey, if I'm going anywhere, I'm going in the Navy. <laughs> So that's what got me going. And when did you enlist? I enlisted on, in, uh, I enlisted around February of 1945, but they let me stay in school until I graduated in June, and then they took me in June. They swore me in at the beginning of June. Okay. So where did you go to boot camp? I went to Sampson, New York. All right. Have any uh, stories to tell from boot camp? Well, I have a few. Um, Please share them all. The um, let's see. When I first got there, the first thing happened: you walk in a big room, and everybody goes in there. You get undressed, and uh, they give you a physical. And when they do, they turn around and they put a needle in your arm, and you have to walk across the room to. Um, uh, have it taken out. And so the guy in front of me, great big humongous guy, all of a sudden he starts sweating. And I looked at him and I went, uh oh. He gets about halfway across the room. They did exactly what they told him not to. Don't look at where you're stuck. He looked and he went out like a light. <laughs> so that was one experience there. And after that, we left and we got all our clothes and everything. And we got to go to the barracks and we met our uh, most illustrious uh, person in charge, which uh, we call little Jesus, after we worked with him for a while. And um, that started my career as far as uh, the Navy was concerned. And after that, um, we went to Chow. Oh, it was great. I went to Chow and I said, hey, oh, I love this steak. Yeah, that's thing. So I took three pieces of it, and when I did, I could back, sat down, liver. <laughs> if there's anything I hate, it's liver. So I figured, oh, I don't have to worry about it. I'm not going to eat it. So I get up with my tray and walk over to grab the, the uh, door, and there's a Marine guard sitting there saying, where are you going? I said, oh, I said, well, I don't like liver. He said, you took it, didn't you? I said, yes, I did. He says, well, you're going to eat it. I had to sit down and eat every bit of that liver. And uh, that's what I learned from the service. Whatever you take, you eat. And then after that, we got tucked in for the night. And uh, when we got up, we started to learn uh, from our uh, man in charge. So uh, we went on with different drills and things and we always learn going down the steps step over the bottom step and if you don't you had to get down kayak never understood why but we found out later when we got aboard ship uh after that then we started doing uh, all kinds of uh, drills and things like that and we went on to rifle ranges and shooting ranges and uh, whatever, but we had to go to PT every day. I hated PT, but my uncle told me never volunteer for anything. And when you first start, they'll have you do a lot of exercises. So only do half of what you can do because when you're done, they want you to have, be able to do more. So I did great. I did half, and then when I was done, my uh, exercises were good. I improved immensely. Um, and and PT, I get tired of going to PT because when you got there, a lot of times you'd have these buckets with cement on the end, and you had to pick it over your head, and you had to hold it up until the weakest person in the place to hold it up. In the meantime, you're putting it down. So I figured it was something easier than this. So they had boxing tournaments. So when I signed up for it, so I got out of PT to go practice for boxing. But 
I hit the box a couple uh, times. I wasn't too swift with that, neither because the gloves weighed a ton. You could hardly hold them up, and uh, it still hurt. So, uh, but I got an extra uh, uh, time to go into Geneva, um, to Geneva for boxing. They gave us uh, two. Uh, they gave us one liberty, but they gave us two. So after that, when we graduated, I graduated in, in when was it? Uh, the beginning of September, in '45. And uh, then we came home for a week. And when we went back, I looked to see where I was going. And lo and behold, I'm going on the same ship my uncle had been on. But he was hurt at uh, one of the battles. So he had been taken off the independence. But I was going on. So uh, we traveled over and we picked it up. In Portland, Oregon, and uh, so I took it from Portland, Oregon. We took it down the uh, Columbia River, and I never got seasick in my life. But I'm going down the Columbia River, and that ship was just rocking slow. That's sick as a First time I ever got seasick. So we pulled out, and once I pulled out in the ocean, we were fine. And from there. I went over to Hawaii. Okay. Um, let me go back to your boot camp. I remember you uh, off camera, you told me a story about uh, when you were uh, qualifying with, uh, I think it was the 20 millimeter, you said, or the uh, gun? Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah please uh, recite that one, because that's a really good one. Yeah. Because it actually influences what you did in the Navy. Well, there's several things. Uh, before that, what we did was we had to... Um, uh, Hold, we were guards over German prisoners. We took turns doing it. So they gave us rifles and we'd go out and march around the perimeter of the, of the uh, stockade. But I said to him, what? Where, where's my ammunition? I said, oh, you don't get any ammunition. They don't know it's not loaded. Just walk around. So, <laughs> if you need help, power. Uh, oh, okay, thank you. So in the meantime, they took us and we um, had to qualify with rifles. But then after that, they put us up where they had a big screen. And on that screen, there was uh, planes coming in and they were shooting at us and things like that. And uh, we were told that we were to shoot down all the good planes so, uh, or the bad planes. So I said, oh, that's fine. So that's what I did. So. The um, uh, little Jesus, my commander, Mac, will you get over here? Said, yes, sir. That's right. That's wrong. He says, Congratulations. I said, Well, what for? He says, You shot down every plane there was, including ours. He <laughs> says, uh, Don't you know how to identify planes? I said, No. He says, Well, you will before you're done. But uh, I said, Oh, well. And he said, "Oh well, I don't want I don't want you in there shooting guns anymore." <laughs> so that was the end of that. Okay, um, so let's forward a little bit. You get to the Independence. Uh, what's your first impression when you see her? When I saw it, yeah, first time you saw it, I said, "Hey, this is a big ship," and uh, I've never owned a carrier before. And I figured, well. Uh, it's a shame my uncle's still not on here, but I'll, uh, I'll have to uh, do whatever I have to do. And that's when I learned out when you go on the carrier, make sure you step over that uh, uh, lip that you have when you go in through the hatches. Because if you don't, you're, you're on a trip. Mm -hmm. So uh, I went right down to the post office because I worked for the post office uh, when I was going to school. And they had uh, three mailmen down there, and two of them were being discharged. So they said, sure, we can use another striker. So they got me down working with them. So that's how I got started into the first service aboard ship. Okay. 
Um, you also, you told me a little earlier that you had a little mishap during general quarters, I think it was. Yes. Uh, I was running the general quarters uh, one of the times and they had changed and put uh, rocket racks on the F4S and I forgot. And the fastest place to uh, CIC where I was was uh, across the flight deck. So I ran across the flight deck. All of a sudden I hit my head and I it pulled back and I didn't give it any thought. So I kept running because I had to get down to my general quarters station. So I'm going down a ladder and going, hey McElwee, you're bleeding. I said, no, I'm not, I'm sweating. So I put my hand up and I go, uh oh. And blood all over the place. So I ran down to my general quarters and the officer in charge said, get out of here and get up sick bed. So I left sick bed and I get there and the um, uh, pharmacist made me out there and said, oh, we have to stitch you up. So he said, we have to give you eight stitches. And we can't give you anything. And I said, well, in the meantime, I had uh, made mail trips and I went by uh, to pick up the mail for officer's country and on the uh, table in there where they eat, oh, they had fresh fruit. <laughs> and I figured, hey, we don't get any of that. So I said, to him, I want three apples. So he said, okay. So he got me three apples. And every time he put a stitch in, I bit an apple. <laughs> and uh, so, anyhow, I still have the score. But, uh, that's something I learned to do. Go very, very low when you go into the mm. <laughs> um, So, what was your, let uh, just be clear, what was your uh, general quarter station on the My Independence? My general quarter station was in uh, CIC, Central Communications. And that's where they had the radar, uh, everything to do with the communications for, that went up to the bridge. Okay, great. Um, and uh, what other, uh, do you have any other stories uh, while you're on independence? This was during World War II, this was, uh, toward the end. This was just about at the end. It wasn't quite over. Okay. Now, were you on the independence when uh, the announcement went out about VJ Day? Uh, yes, I was. So how did you react? How did you feel? Yeah, a little insight on that. Well, I, I just figured, well, that's half of it. Now we have to get rid of the other half. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. right. So you were on board when the Japanese surrendered? Yes, I was on board when the Japanese surrendered. Right. And how did you feel about that one? Because now you have Great. both done. I felt good about that. Mm -hmm. yeah. I felt good because I, I knew that uh, uh, there was going to be many lives that were going to be saved after that. Right. Now, obviously, by this time, you had heard why the Japanese surrendered and the uh, weapon we used. Uh, what was your reaction to that? Should have used it years ago. <laughs> okay. Now, you did have an interaction with the battleship New Jersey. Uh, first of all, the first time you saw it, um, describe how you uh, came about to see the New Jersey, and then just give me an idea of like the first time you set eyes on it. Your well, reaction. What happened is, is, is after the, the war had stopped, uh, they turned around and came up with a magic carpet deal to bring troops uh, back to the United States. So we had pulled in down at, um, I'm pretty sure it was at um, San Francisco because there's a big naval base right in there if you go under the uh, Golden Gate Bridge. And lo and behold, the uh, New Jersey was uh, tied up there. And I looked and I went, holy mackerel, look at the size of that thing. And I said, boy, I'd like to go on that. So I had to make a mail trip. And when I did, I met the mailman off the New Jersey. And he took me aboard. And he took me for a kind of a grand tour on it. And I was amazed at the size of that. And uh, a lot of a lot of men on that. Our ship had a complement of fifteen hundred and sixty-eight. And I don't know, 
New Jersey looked like it had a couple thousand. <laughs> so uh, it, it was a, a very interesting uh, tour, and I learned a lot. Mm -hmm. Did you ever think about, hey, I'd like to transfer over there? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> That's honest. I didn't want a battleship. I like my carrier. I okay. like carrier duty. All right. So um, the war's over, and um, you're now uh, given a different assignment where um, you're going to Bikini Atoll. Did they tell you why? Well, it was before that assignment, uh, like I said, we had a um, tour where we picked up all the troops mm -hmm. and we're bringing them back to the United States. And what we did is when we were in the port uh, in uh, San Francisco, they took out, uh, took off our planes and they took off, um, all of the uh, hangar deck things up, and they put bunks in there. And they were pretty high up, they were just about to seal them. And so we went back over to pick troops up. Now we picked troops up at Iwo Jima, and going into Iwo Jima uh, was really a surprise because um, as we were going in, uh, I was going to make a mail trip, and so. I had gone up to the uh, uh, flight deck, and when I was up there, they were making arrangements to drop the anchor. And uh, there was a boatswain's mate there. You know boatswain's mates, they're all timers and they know the sea. Well, we had a new engine come aboard, and that ensign is in charge of uh, dropping the anchor. So he told the boatswain's mate, hit the pin. And the, and the boatswain made looked at him and said, "No, I think I better. Uh, I think better wait just a little longer." And he said, "I said hit the pin. That's an order." So, yes, sir. He hit the pin. He said, and all we heard was click, 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 and all of a sudden we saw the the engines start to sweat. And it didn't take long until all of a sudden you heard bang, <laughs> and the anchor was gone. So we uh, went along for the rest of the uh, time that the uh, ship was in mission with one anchor. It looked really funny when you saw it. <laughs> okay. Um, continue on. Uh, you getting your orders to Bikini Atoll? Well, How'd that come after about? that, when we came back, um, there was no nod to come out, but they wanted volunteers for the King and Paul. Um, and I wasn't going to volunteer. My uncle told me no to volunteer. He was right. So um, I figured out oh, what the heck. I might as well volunteer. So I did. And so we... Um, we left on the 1945 Christmas Eve and we went over to Hawaii and we went, by the way, when we go in Hawaii, we always had a stand of attention when we went by the Arizona. And um, we turned around and went to Ford Island and we unloaded uh, all of our gear, except for what we actually had to wear. I mean, I still have my uh, uh, hammock from World War II. It's in the skirt shape as a white thing. And uh, all that stuff was geared, was put away at Pearl Harbor. And so when we left Pearl Harbor, then we went out to Kenya Atoll and so but sure the other ships started showing up, and we had our position for the night. There was 93 ships in the test, and they consisted of, of every type of ship there was, from, from submarines to um, uh, battleships, aircraft carriers, uh, the uh, smaller uh, vessels that we had. They were all there, 93 of them. And uh, then when 
we would go swimming, we would do everything else, that was fine. But, they had, I don't think they had any idea of what they were doing. None was away. Because what happened is, when that, when we bomb was going off, they took us off the ship, put us on other ships. And when they did, I landed up on the USS or Tunis AK-230, that was an attack vessel. And uh, I was upwind, I was fortunate. Uh, the other people that were downwind, a lot of them were not here today. Uh, five days after the test, I went back aboard uh, in Nevada and uh, to see the damage. And there, they had uh, put live animals on the different ships. And there was two sailors there home a goat. And the goat was actually still alive, eating hay with his brains hanging out. And it, it, even when I show that to some of my friends, they really get upset. They say, oh, God, look at that goat. His brains are hanging out. But, hey, that's war, right? So, um, the uh, column of water that went up in the air was uh, approximately three football fields long and went up uh, over a mile. And if you look in the right hand corner of the picture, you'll see a cigar. That cigar is actually the USS Arkansas a battleship lifted totally out of the water. Um, the damage that done to our ship was really uh, bad, but not as bad as the first test. The first test when it went off, um, I put the test out of sequence here, but the first test that went off, when it went up, it let out a cloud that you would not believe it. Burning fire inside, and we were only 15 miles away when uh, that went off. I kind of mixed up the, the two tests. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. But uh, after the test, uh, and we went back to the ship, they're saying to us, oh, you don't have to worry about radioactivity. And we're saying, oh, okay. Well, where do we get all our water from? We get our drinking water and everything is manufactured from the ship, from the water that's around it, and it's all radioactive. So, I mean, they didn't really know too much. And uh, after that, and then we were there until after the second test, and then uh, they sent us home. So uh, they sent me to uh, Pearl Harbor, and then from Pearl Harbor, I came back on the USS um, Boxer, the, battle of the uh, aircraft company, back to San Diego, and that's where I got discharged. So that, that was about that. And afterwards, uh, my mouth was pretty also really but they said oh, I was nerves that would go away. But it took there about six months to go away and trip to the naval hospital. So that was about the mm -hmm. Then after that was over, the other thing that happened was Nurse Sierra got discharged and home or enjoy myself and the next war started. Yes. <laughs> they recalled us. Mm. So I landed up ready to go down to the Navy Yard and they gave me my orders to come down. Meantime, I went up my aunt's farm and I loved the horseback ride and I got on the horse and uh, some idiot going down the road to the horn and the horse bolted <laughs> and went through a, a gateway and a fence and knocked me off the horse and tread on my foot and broke my foot. So I went down to the Navy Yard to report 
for duty. And guess what? They couldn't take me. So <laughs> I got out of that one. Okay. And that, that was the end of my service. Okay. Actually, that was one of my next questions. Uh, when did you get out? Uh, but you already covered that. So um, what did you do for a living after you got out of the Navy? After I got out of the Navy, um, I wanted to be a mechanical engineer. And I went, took an aptitude test, and he said I wouldn't make a good that I would be better working with my hands. So my father was a printer, and I decided, well, why don't I do that? So I, I started printing. I worked for the uh, Indian Bulletin, you know, working for uh, a daily newspaper, and I worked for the Empire. You know, mm -hmm. And then my father and I decided to go in business for myself. So I went in business, and uh, I worked at that uh, from 1948, 1949, until we got forced out of business when the city of Philadelphia and the uh, uh, Trans uh, Transportation Authority uh, took down the Allen Philadelphia. And when they did, all the businesses along there, uh, most of them either went bankrupt or whatever. And the city of Philadelphia would not uh, reimburse you. Hmm. So uh, I sued them. And uh, I had to go all the way up through the Supreme Court. Really? Yes. Do you remember your case name? It was Thomas McElwain's son, and it was versus uh, the city of Philadelphia and the uh, transportation company. And we won. And when the uh, when the uh, transportation company president came in, he wouldn't even shake my hand <laughs> when he handed me the check. Mm -hmm. oh. But we made out like a big one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm actually, if you don't mind, I'm going to look that up because I, I do a little constitutional uh, history stuff on the side, like when I'm not working. So I like to look up different cases. Where do you live? Uh, I live in Ben Salem area. Okay. If you ever wanted to, if you wanted to come on my house, I'd be glad to show you those comic bond movies. Okay. And at the same time, I'll give you all the briefs from our uh, uh, court case. Sure. I have them. Okay. Um, what uh, type of media are they on? Uh, film? Just uh, old reel-to-reel -reel films? They're on paper. The, the, the. Oh, okay. I thought you meant you had an actual film of it. Oh, no. You are talking about oh, photos. Oh, the Adam Bontes, yes. Okay. But uh, mm -hmm. the, the briefs from the um, no, it's on the film that information. Right. Now, the reason I asked about film is uh, something that valuable. We should try to uh, figure out how to digitize something we could talk about after the interview. Mm -hmm. uh, but you definitely want to get as much of the old stuff digitized for future. Oh, yeah, well, I don't need it anymore, but <laughs> like you say, it might be good to keep. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But there's, we'll find, we'll talk about it after the interview. We'll find a way to try to get that digitized for future generations because film does eventually yeah, run they out. never, never you know, in the lifetime thought that we would win that case. Right. Okay. Good Irish lawyer. <laughs> so you're out of um Let's go back. Um, first of all, before I ask you to some of the final questions, any other naval stories that you'd like to share just off the top of your head? They don't have to be in any kind of... Uh, sequence sequence of time just anything that comes to your mind that you'd like to share with us about any of your naval experiences yeah well there, there was a couple things that uh, i really enjoyed and that was whenever i went into port i would uh look for a roller skating rink i'd go like long beach california was the main place pretty much and at long beach california I would go into Pasadena or someplace like that. Mm -hmm. And the one time I'm going through in Pasadena and I found these shots and said, what are you, uh, what are you doing? I said, oh, I'm going to go for a movie for the weekend. He said, how would you like to spend it with us? And it was a family. 
a beautiful home they had. And so they took me home and they I stayed there for my uh, for for that. Mm -hmm. But the other thing that I was very unhappy about was when we had come in to Long Beach, we always come back to the beach in uh, taxis because we had a anchor out. So when you came back, so we had a Lieutenant Commander C support ship. And I did not like him at all. He was a nasty, nasty person. And we were coming back one time from Liberty and it was pretty late at night. And um, we got aboard the ship, um, the, the water taxi bringing it back, and he got it on it. And there was a couple of sailors that got it on it, and one sailor was drunk. I mean, he was really drunk. And he, he was laying down on the, on the deck in the taxi. And the lieutenant commander ceased to turn around. And this should be on record in the files. Um, I turned around and told him to get off the floor. And he, he didn't get off the floor. And he kicked the hell out of him. Broke three ribs. Mm. And when he came back, he put the sailor on the report. And we saw what happened. And we, we complained to our people in charge. And they were going to hold a, a case on it. But it seemed as though two days later, the Sarah was transferred. Mm -hmm. Does that tell you something? Yeah, so it never came about. And the Lieutenant Commander Cease uh, got out of it. Mm. And the other thing is, I shouldn't tell this one. But uh, he went to um, Pearl Harbor with us. His orders got lost. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how it happened, but they got lost and he couldn't leave the ship, so he had to go to Pearl Harbor and fly back. Mm -hmm. Where the family stayed in there. Right. Yeah. Don't know how it happened. <laughs> All right. Anything else? I'm trying to remember some of the ones you might have told me off the record that uh, uh, would be nice to hear. Uh, but if you think of any, I think we covered most of them. Yeah. Any others? Yeah, Anything I, from boot camp or well, your time camp, on the independence? There, there was a lot of uh, different things in boot camp. There were the ones when uh, it was funny when you went in the room and they said, take off your gas mask. Oh, yes. All four branches go oh, through that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when they're, take off your gas mask. And you take your gas mask off, and, and all of a sudden, and then he, he'd say to you when you go outside, stand with the wind in your eyes. Don't rub your eyes. Whatever you do, don't rub your eyes. Some of the guys would be rubbing their <laughs> eyes, and uh, that would make it worse. Yeah. Yeah. My experience with that was at Fort and then, Dix. And then when I was on Iwo Jima, I uh, I made the mail trip and I took like that and the sand and I picked up an M1. A shell or the actual M1 rifle? M1 rifle. Oh wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And brought it back to uh, the ship and they brought it down and took it to the gunner's mates and they kind of look it over and fix up. Mm -hmm. So that poor guy, I felt sorry for him because he had to be dead. Right. Yeah. There's a lot of interesting things. That the other one was uh, with the captain's gig. We were making a mail trip one time. And um, we turned <laughs> We're going in. To the beach and it was shell. I can't remember whether what island it was. It was either Saipan or Tim. It was one of those islands. And uh, we were going in and we had to go through reefs to get in there. So 
the uh, person's made how to go to bed. He says, I have to go to bed. He says, here, Tom, screw this. He says, go between those. I said, okay. So I hit one. <laughs> Put a hole in his boat. <laughs> it didn't stink. <laughs> but I, he, he said, oh, my God, whatever you do. He said, don't. <laughs> Don't tell him you were steering. <laughs> he said, I'd be in deep trouble. So. All right. So how about uh, one here where um, you had liquor on board and you hit it somewhere? Oh, yes, I did. <laughs> that, was a, that, that was on Christmas Eve. Right. And we were pulling out. And they do a captain's inspection. Always a ship's inspection. And people bring liquor back. Like if you're coming back through the gate, the guards are there, they'll say, Oh, what's that damn by your ankles? And they whack you with the with the uh, nightstick and you start crying because the bottle broke. <laughs> you put it in your sock. Right. Or you put it around your waist or whatever you put it to get it in. Or you put it around the bumper or the bus. Well, those guys decided that they uh, would ask me if I could get liquor with them. And I said, yeah, I can. But I can drink that. I, I, and so I said, well, how much liquor is this? I said, well, how much can you get? And he says, a lot. So he said, okay. Well, they took up a collection with a list. I went into Pasadena on my mail when I was in the post office and I picked up a bunch of, of empty mail sacks. So I brought them back to the ship. Well, on the ship and where we were, we had a big safe. Nobody could open the safe and nobody had to open it because there was nothing in it. But the combination was yours. And I played around with it, played around with it, played. I got it open. Wow. So, I, I reset the combination when I got it open. You can reset the combinations. I reset the combinations when I got it open. I never told anybody. Well, I went ashore with the mail service. When I did, I stopped in the liquor store and put all this liquor I could buy and put it in the mail service. I could have been court martialed. Right. So, what I did was I, I put it all back to the ship and put it aboard and I told the guy, don't rattle those bottles when you go up the, the ladder to go aboard. I said, be quiet. So we got them up and got them back, put them down personally. And I put them in the seat. Oh, that thing, I crashed down. I kick them in there. You know? It was full. So, and they had this surprise inspection thing around. They inspect pretty much everywhere. Post office, they usually never bother with anything. But they, they don't, just look around. Mm -hmm. so they were asking about the safe. They knew about the safe. They knew we couldn't open it, so I didn't worry about it. So, in the meantime, all the bottles they had, they'd take strings and they would tie it up the porthole. You know, like where I looked at that porthole up there? Right, right. Well, they'd just take a string and they'd tie it out there and hang it over the side. And the officer would come up and say, Oh, look at that. <laughs> and they would cut the string. <laughs> <laughs> so that night, uh, after after hours, uh, we would turn around, and it would be funny. The guys would be coming down. And say, got mine. Got mine. So get it all out. You know. I think the ship must have been all coarse enough to stay on my <laughs> And then the other thing is, every time I made a mail uh, trip up at night time, I turned around and down by the, the kitchen, by the mess, and they, I smell, and they, they give you a nice hot loaf of bread with a quarter of a thing of butter. And I bring it back to my post office. The post office was free. I, it was mine. Mm -hmm. I, I slept there. I did everything. So you were the work. only postal clerk on the ship, on then the I Independence? Was. Yes. Wow. And what was that crew size again? Uh, 1,569. 
So you're sorting mail for all those sailors and packages. Wow. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay. Just wanted to clarify all so that. So then when I made a mail trip to go to shore, it was really funny because when I did, um, they would turn around and when I came back, chow was over. So what I do is I go down and I, I would sort out my mail because we would do it according to divisions and mm -hmm. different ranks. Captain, I always gave him his mail. Except to Except always put the mail. Nobody else. If the commander ceased, I wouldn't bring the mail. He tried a court martial. Oh, jeez. He, he was nasty. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't bring his mail. I said, no, sir. I said, I'm not going to play. Now I said, uh, I'll find out from the captain. Don't worry about it. Then. Uh, so, but when I come back, after I got all, everything sorted, I would take the mail that I had and I would take the mail for the cooks and bring the mail down and give it to me. Mm -hmm. I ate better than the cat. <laughs> I ate steak. So mm -hmm. I ate, you know, they make stuff up for me special. So, uh, oh, the mailman had it made. Right. Yeah. So when the. Um, all ships, mailmen have it made. Right. So on the independence, uh, how was your mail delivered when you were out to sea? How was it delivered? Yeah, how did you get it to the ship? We usually got it by um, when we pulled into port, mm -hmm. unless all, all the time that I usually did it, we would pull into port. Okay. We would come into port because we were always near a port somewhere. Okay. Great. So, and we went over the equator at one time, too. Ooh, please tell us about that. Th those are always good stories of Pollywog and... Yeah, but we yeah. didn't do all that. Oh, you didn't? Okay. No. But we, at that particular time, we were in a hurry. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. We, we, didn't, uh, we didn't do it. Yeah, so, somehow I think you would have been spared, though, with all your being the mailman. I doubt <laughs> it. I don't think so. But I got, I got, I got my paperwork for it. Good. But the only thing I didn't get was uh, torture. <laughs> All right. <laughs> because they were good at that. They were tortured. Yeah, we have. We actually uh, later on. I'll tell you, I'll show you the little display we have of that uh, tradition. Oh, we'll call it. Okay. And uh, they like. They usually let you do it too. Mm -hmm. But um, under some, so when you're running somewhere, when you uh, you got to get there. Uh, we're not going to let you do that. Okay. So. Let's go over um, one of the last questions I usually ask uh, is um, looking back, how did the Navy influence your life? Uh, I liked it, but I didn't. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't. They, they have too much control over you. I'm not a controlled person. I don't like to be told what to do. Mm -hmm. In certain ways, I mean, other ways, fine. If it's something that's, you know, my work, if I'm being told to do something, is something that I'm not too happy with. Okay. All right. Um, just real quick question. Uh, after you retired, did you um, travel anywhere? After I retired, mm -hmm. uh, not until... I got married, and I didn't get married until um, I was 27. Mm -hmm. So, and then after that, uh, I, I traveled with my wife, my cookbook. And then I have five children. Oh, great. And uh, how are they all doing? Uh, one died. Mm -hmm. Sorry. And he uh, died a couple of years ago. And my one daughter. Uh, Colleen, she worked for she worked for the Treasury Department, but she switched to another department, and she's been with the government for a long time. Good. And then I have uh, my other daughter is a school teacher in Marple Township, mm -hmm. and uh, Pat is uh, manages the uh, inquiry in Philadelphia. Oh, okay. He has a he has a very good job, mm. and then. Uh, uh, Mayor, my younger one, she's uh, in the automotive 
business. She's an estimator and uh, we repair work and things like that. Okay. Now, since I asked you about traveling after you retired, uh, do you have any favorite ports while you were uh, active duty? Any ports of call that you just remember that you really liked? Yes, I like Portland, Oregon. Portland? Okay. What, Portland. what about Portland? It, it was just in general. I like the people, I like the, uh, the climate, and I like um, you know, the general, you know, the terrain and all Mm -hmm. it was, it was, I thought it was really neat. I've been in every state except Alaska and uh, the state of Washington. Mm -hmm. and that's right next to Portland. Right. Yeah. There's two I right know. But the only thing, oh, the only other thing that I did in Hawaii was I loved. I love watermelon, mm -hmm. and they had a fruit that looked just like watermelon. Who was it? Who was it? Some kind of a squash or something. I mm. don't know, but I didn't know the difference. <laughs> I carried that thing all day long, thinking it was a watermelon, and brought it back to the ship. Mm -hmm. And when I brought it back to the ship, uh, they turned around and cut it, and I was very surprised to find out it didn't work. <laughs> but also, when I was on Guam, I went up on a mail trip and I picked up that for some bananas. And those bananas were so good. And we had a Gidon, they called a Gidon. I don't right. know, is, is that on this ship here? Yes. Yeah. Okay, it took a Gidon to have ice cream. All right? So, in a Gidon, they have ice cream. So. I figured I'm going to have a banana split because I love banana split. So I got the bananas. I uh, brought them back. They were on the board ship. And after I got on the board ship, uh, I got the ice cream, cut the bananas, bit a couple of them, and all of a sudden, they, were, ooh, ooh, ooh. they were green bananas. Oh. <laughs> and, they're, and they're like alum in your mouth. Mm -hmm. I couldn't talk for about an hour. I'm going, ooh. And the guy said, what's the matter with you? I said, ooh, banana. I was going to give them a banana if they wanted one. <laughs> but, did, did they take it? Huh? Did no, they take they it? Ah, oh, they knew. Said, okay. Oh, oh that would have been a good one. Yeah. And then um, I started with the one mailman before he got transferred off. After his, uh, uh, he gave his name was, uh, what was his name? Hard to get, but one of the mailmen. And he taught me how to play chess. And we were in the middle of the game when he got transferred off. Mm -hmm. and we played by mail because the game was over. Yeah. So the, the only thing you could do on there was play courts. And we're, you know, gamble. They, they gamble. Right. And uh, they, they, they mail it. And, they, and the chair pot was always on 24 hours a day. You could, you know, of course. Mm -hmm. You couldn't have cream in it. Right. You could have like, yeah, sugar. But, you know, but I wouldn't use sugar. I just wanted it. Right. But after so many hours, they jumped in and put sugar. So that was, that was pretty good. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, all in all, would I do it over again? Yes. I, I would have done it over again. Uh, I wouldn't like to just be uh, in the deck crew, I would still like to be. I'd like to be in the business, you want the truth, because it, it right. was really uh, a good job. You had no watches to stand. They didn't make the stand watches or anything. Right. The only thing you had was your general quarters. And um, I didn't have to show up in the mornings for the muster. I had uh, pretty much my own yeah, which made it, you know, really good. Mm -hmm. And it, it let me get to, to see the different ships. Right. But 
when I was in Virginia at all, I could go on, we had what we had before, like the ferry, you know, like a, like a boat that went around each ship. Mm -hmm. And they would pick you up and, and take you to wherever you were going to get. Well, it was a regular route where they go and they cover pretty much all the ships. Well, there's 92 ships, but they turned around and had a couple furs. And um, then if you went on a ship, uh, you could turn around and ferry over onto, you know, another ship that you were going to. But I was on the Japanese, oh my God, I was a friend. I keep saying the wrong name for like the battleship, the, the uh, Japanese ship that was in between the two. Uh, what was the name? Was it Nakata? Yeah, some something. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I got the wrong tip on the time. But whatever one it was, mm -hmm. I wouldn't afford that. That was a nice looking ship. Right. It wasn't good. It had bad tubs on it and everything else. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, it, it was nice. And but the uh, when after the bombing off the first bomb is when the uh, old lady the grip got her mm -hmm. got a leak and sunk. Mm -hmm. We had to tow it, you know, uh, in so it wouldn't uh, sink too out. Right. Now, I had, or I'm still trying to get out the bikini at all, but I haven't been able to. I wanted to dive out there. Mm -hmm. Because I've been diving uh, for 50 some years. Right. And uh, I've gone to the YMCA. I was a field rep for the while. I took new divers, new instructors. Um, for left diving, his diving, uh, safety management, uh, all kinds of uh, other things, everything pretty much photography. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I did a lot of search and recovery for the face departments. Okay. Uh, but that I like. Mm -hmm. yeah. What was that? Mine. No, it's not mine. Oh, it's mine. That's okay. No, it just it just makes a crazy noise for whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. All right. Um, any last things you'd like to add before we wind down? Do you need any more? We'll take as many as you'd like to tell. Any stories you'd like? I, I, I'm pretty much uh, got all my stories. Mm -hmm. The time is for you. No, I mean, did I cover it? Oh, gosh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, well, in that case... Uh, well, you, you got you got pretty much, you know, all the stories. Mm -hmm. So I might have a few that I don't quite remember. Okay. But, uh, uh, oh, the other thing is, in boot camp, when you did your wash, you had to hang it up. You had to hang it up with the square knot. Mm -hmm. If you didn't hang it up with the square knot, he went along with a pair of scissors and cut it. Oh, and it went right down in the mud. <laughs> you had to rewash it. And, uh, but he, he was tough, but I think that some of the others weren't as tough as him. And I think he did me a favor. Mm -hmm. I think even though you, you figure he was really tough, it worked out to my advantage. Because when I went aboard ship and everything else, it was a lot easier on me than it was on some of those fellows that had easier people in command. Right. And then we did have a barber that, see, they pick on somebody. They get one person and they kind of pick one. Well, they picked on this barber, and this barber was from down Philadelphia. He, uh, an Italian barber, and he was a good barber, he was a nice guy. So, whatever it was that uh, little Jesus didn't like about, 
he was on them all the time. He was giving them uh, extra guard duty to do and all this and that. So finally, uh, he was getting real um, fed up with it. So he told Jesus to go to town, right? And he needed a haircut. So he told me, he says, I want you to cut my hair. So I said, well, I'm okay. So he put him in, set him down. He cut his cutters out, you know. And then he says, <laughs> right down the hole. So he gave him a mohawk right down here. <laughs> and he screamed. He said, where do I get back? When I get back, Barbara went and help. <laughs> so he couldn't take it anymore. Mm -hmm. so, you know, so whatever happened to him, I never did find out. Oh, okay. But it was a shame. Mm -hmm. But those things do happen. Yeah. Military life is not for everyone. Well, I have a lot of letters that I mailed home to my mother. Mm -hmm. and telling about a lot of things about the comic bomb fest and things like that. And I put them away and I just um, you know, put them away for the kids. Right. So but, uh, it's like uh, Mike, his um, mother had letters from the Civil War. And when um, the guy was in the battle in the Civil War, I don't know which side he was in. Mm -hmm. uh, Mike didn't. <laughs> mm -hmm. But that's. Uh, that's about all. Okay.